Hey everyone, welcome back to another Nintendo Prime Reacts. Today, I, Nathaniel Rufflejance, your host, am joined by YouTuber Mason of Delfino. Hello. And I know, I, I just had this and I'm going to get it wrong, Sir Surge Outlet from Twitch. He's a streamer. What's up, ladies and gents? The very first time he's actually been with us on anything we've done here, so nice to have you here. No, thank you. So today... There was a, a little Pokemon Direct. And when I say a little, yes. I mean, they had three three big announcements, but it was only eight minutes long. So they kind of put a lot into eight minutes. Uh, so before we react and get into some thoughts and opinions on, on what all happened, let's just go over the general gist of, of what happened today. Uh, the There is Pokken Tournament Deluxe, or DX if you prefer, they they translated it as deluxe but it's dx on all the packaging uh that is coming to nintendo switch i believe on september 22nd and it features five new pokemon over the original pokken tournament for wii u and arcades uh one of those pokemon happened to be from pokemon sun and moon no surprise there and then they also added some new modes i believe three new modes uh, I really should have those modes up. I know one of them is, is online rankings, so they have ranked battles. Uh, they also have, there it is, friendly match, which they describe as a casual battle mode. So, you know, pretty standard for most fighting games. And then a group match, which is a friends-only battle mode. Um, also in the teaser, they showed things like it works in all the different ways you can use the Switch. So, split screen, ta tabletop mode, single Joy-Cons. Yada, yada, yada. Multiple Switches hooked up together. Um, so all the ways we've seen Switch used in the past, this game does that as well. Uh, they also announced, and it was really weird how they announced it, because they kind of snuck it in at the end of the Pokemon Tournament Deluxe trailer, uh, is Pokemon Sun and Moon Ultra Editions. Yes. Uh, those are, they're, I mean, I guess they're brand new Pokemon games, is, is how they're describing them. Uh, with new stories, new Pokemon... Taking yeah, it's kind of, from what I understand, it's kind of like uh, Pokemon Black and White 2. Yep, that, that's the way I see it too. Uh, so, again, they're, they're calling them brand new Pokemon games, mainline franchise games, coming out in November 17th. Uh, and, yeah, we, we, we just saw brief glimpses of gameplay. I didn't really see a whole lot. Uh, and then the last announcement was that Pokemon Gold and Silver are coming to 3DS Virtual Console. On September 22nd. Uh, and I guess the big thing with that uh, is that you can like battle and transfer wirelessly, which is pretty standard today. But obviously back in those days, you had to use those clunky cords. Uh, and it's compatible with the Pokemon Bank, which I feel like they're just doing with all their games they release at this point. All right. All right. So that's the gist of it. Three big announcements, eight minutes. What uh? Well, let's start with... Uh, Sir Surge outlet over there. What? Uh, which one of these announcements really stood out to you? Well, hmm, probably the the virtual console on 3DS probably stood out to me the most because correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they just uh, remake these games for the 3DS or was that Gen 3? Oh, jeez. You know I should Omega. Yeah. Like Alpha Sapphire? It was something like that. It wasn't it uh Soul Silver and uh Oh man. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember what the gold one was called. For some reason the Soul Silver one's sticking with me. Heart Gold. Heart Gold, yeah. Was there it? it is. Okay, maybe maybe I'm thinking of something else. But yeah, those were kind of like remakes. Ah, uh, well, virtual console support is always good to see. It makes me uh question what it would be like if we did get it on Switch, which is the biggest question that I have, is why was the Pokemon stars that we were supposed to get on Switch? But um, <laughs> I guess I guess Pokemon of whatever Deluxe Edition Seven Point Three <laughs> Sun and Moon that that looks great. I suppose <laughs> I didn't pick up Sun and Moon for myself, sure, but. Sure. Um, my friend said it was all right, and so maybe I'll pick up this version and give it a shot. Yeah, everyone's been trying to convince me. I have I did not pick up Pokemon Sun and Moon last year myself either. Uh, one, 
you know, to be open and honest with our fan base, I, I've kind of fallen out of love with the Pokemon series. Uh, I played it religiously up until about Diamond and Pearl, and then I just kind of fell out. Um, it just felt too repetitive, and while there was, like, new things they were doing with each game, it just... The game started taking itself almost too seriously in my mind. There's just... It, it got so complex if you wanted to build good teams that it wasn't that complex back in the day. And then Ice Cream Pokemon. Oh, God. Yeah, and the Pokemon designs were getting bad. Uh, and... I, want, I really wanted to get Sun and Moon, and then I played the demo, and as people at the channel know, infamously, I hated the demo. Uh, I thought it was one of the worst video game demos I've ever played that's actually playable. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> but, I, but all of my complaints I've had with that demo, everyone, all of my friends that I played it assured me that those complaints aren't valid to the actual game. It's just they put out a demo that wasn't going to convey uh, the games properly. They, it kind of... The demo worked well, I was told, for people who have continually been playing Pokemon, but if people were trying to get back into the series, it was not a very good introduction. Um, and that's fine. I mean, I, yeah, there is Darren, the editor-in-chief over at Zelda Informer. He, uh, he told me he might actually be sending me one of his uh, either Pokemon Sun or Pokemon Moon for me to play. I told mm -hmm. him if he did that, I will definitely play it then. I might even do some live streams of it, but I, have, I haven't played them. So... When I, when I hear Ultra, you know, the Ultra, what is it? Sun, Ultra Moon, you know, new stories, new Pokemon. I haven't experienced the original story yet. And I don't know if there's anything about those games that's going to make me want to try those ones out either. Uh, especially since it does feel like a, like a lot like the Black 2, White 2 situation. And I didn't play those games either. Uh, I don't think these iterative releases where they're basically reusing content just to get a new game out um, does it for me. Because it, it's kind of lazy in a way. And, and I think I've seen that as like the general reaction to this Direct has been a lot of people have been like, well, yeah, it, it's not just that we're disappointed that Pokemon Stars or whatever wasn't announced or confirmed to exist or any sort of Switch game besides Pokken Tournament Deluxe. It's that you're, you have a kind of like a, a remade version of a game you released last year with a new story. And then that, that honestly... People these days just expect that as DLC. Like, Breath of the Wild's getting brand new story DLC at the end of the year. Right, yeah. Um, so, like, they obviously could have just released this new story with new Pokemon as a DLC pack for 20 bucks. But, you know, that's not what they're doing. That's not what Pokemon... It's the Pokemon company. Yeah, and it's the Pokemon company. You know, that's not what they do. They try to have a big game come out every single year, even if it's... They live by their own rules. Yeah, they live by their own rules. Well, and the prime example is the fact we even have a Pokemon Direct, you know, days from E3. See, that's something that threw me off. Uh, sorry to jump in just all of a sudden. But, like, basically, you know, they've never really actually announced a huge Pokemon title at E3, I don't think, have they? In, like, recent years, anyway? Nope, they've uh, always done it in directs before E3. Right, and that's something that people have just begun to expect, in a way. But if they announced these three things here, all of a sudden, what would they have for Pokemon for Switch besides Pokemon Tournament? Uh, no, deluxe. there's not going to be anything. Right. So everybody's expecting, you know, once we got the announcement, like, oh, hey, Pokemon Direct tomorrow, everybody's minds went to Sinnoh remakes. And, <laughs> you know, everybody's like, oh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Hyping up games that aren't going to exist. You don't have confirmation that it's existing. Why hype it up? So everybody's disappointed now, seemingly, anyway, because it's basically Sun and Moon 2, you know. Yeah. And I mean, just, it is. I don't know why they didn't even use the two. Right. Uh, I to be honest. I, I've played both of those games, uh, Sun and Moon, but it's just like, I can't see myself going out and buying this because Pokemon, it's a series to me that, I mean, while I understand the hype about it, you know, it's a very well-rounded franchise overall. It's just, it seems so repetitive to me as somebody that kind of stands out from that crowd in a way. Um, so I can't see myself jumping right back in for it, you know? Yeah, it's... I agree. Yeah, it's one of those things to me, and I feel like a hypocrite saying this because, you know, obviously I've been following the Zelda series very closely all these years, bought all the Zelda games, love most of them, um, and there's times, you know, people feel like, oh, it's a cash grab, like Phantom Hourglass, and they had the quick turnaround with, with uh, Spirit Tracks, and, you know, that was reusing assets and stuff, but it wasn't one, it didn't even take place in the same world, like it had an actual world compared to an ocean. Uh, and that to me was a big enough difference to be like, okay, this isn't the same kind of Zelda game. Whereas like with Pokemon, they, 
a lot of the games kind of feel samey to me. And I know Pokemon Sun and Moon was like a big step from like where the franchise has been. So, you know, it's like the, the uh, you know, finally after all these years a true evolution of where Pokemon is going. Uh, but to have something so iterative on that this quickly uh, on a system that, at least personally, I'm not that excited for 3DS games anymore. Right. Um, because. We got the and, Switch. Yeah, I got the Switch. Like, I hate, you know, some people got mad at me before for saying, oh, well, the Switch doesn't replace the 3DS. I'm like, that's fine. I understand that. But in my mind, I'm not going to play on two different mobile video game systems when I'm out. I'm only going to take one, and I'm right. going to take the Switch. I mean, the thing is, I mean, people like it because it's new, and I get it. I mean, it's a seriously cool thing, too. You know, it's not just because it's new why people play it. But people begin to expect it's 2017. You know, we got to have something kind of in this um, era to play, in a way. And the 3DS doesn't cut that anymore. It's, what, six years old now? And, I mean, I still love my 3DS, don't get me wrong. But they definitely went more hardcore with their releases back in the day, whenever it was still kind of getting out there, you know. Now they just kind of release what seem like filler titles, just to kind of keep it alive. Yeah, I mean, the only way I can excuse what they're doing now, also the fact that they've always done this, so it's really... I... Coming into this direct where everyone was like hyping it up, I'm like, dude, they're just gonna like port Pocket Tournament and maybe release Sun and Moon Two. That's all I expected, and that's basically what we got. Uh, outside of the, obviously the new Virtual Console stuff, and that's great, but they you know they regularly release Virtual Console versions of the game, so like that to me that's not even that big of an announcement. Even as much as I love Gold and Silver, um, you know, if they would have announced it for Switch and that would have been the very first Virtual Console game announced for Switch, that would have been cool. Um, since to we don't even know if Virtual Console into, coming to Switch. Oh, but, to put it into uh, most simplest terms, my uh, roommate texted me when he saw the Direct because it happened while I was still at work, and he said that he was expecting nothing from this Direct and he was still a bit disappointed. <laughs> yeah, the, the only way... I mean, even though this is what I expected... You know, and I didn't buy Pokemon Tournament on Wii U, so I'll probably end up getting it on Switch. And I'm sure it's fantastic. Like, the idea of Pokemon battling, like, throwing back to, like, old fighting games and to, uh, you know, Pokemon Stadium kind of thing, except, you know, you're manually controlling the Pokemon. Like, it, it feels really cool and, like, a concept I would enjoy. But this overall Direct, it's kind of like everyone right now is kind of waiting for that that new Switch news that is going to make them feel like they were justified, I guess, in buying a Switch. Um, and that's not to say they don't feel that way. I'll say Breath of the Wild, but again, a lot of the arguments right now are the two best games in the system are Wii U games that were ported. Um, right. And, you know, now we know one of the, the next best games coming out is going to be a Wii U port. So, yeah, we have ARMS coming out which next week, which is obviously a big deal. You know, it's the first, like, new IP, but it's also kind of Nintendo's first switch exclusive game coming out uh which whoever thought that it would be a brand new ip would be their first ex switch exclusive triple a game coming out um just crazy to think that it, it's a new ip it's not mario it's not zelda it, it's you know a brand new ip with, that's totally unproven in the market but w when i looked at this direct i was like well i know what they're going to do but it's not what they should do the only excuse to me, is if later this year or early next year, we find out there is a Pokemon game coming to Switch, and they just weren't ready to talk about it till 2018. Um, and that would make this year just be like, okay, well, this year just is what it is. They are cash-grabbing as much as they can. You know, they threw out these titles, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, on 3DS instead of Switch because they're already working on a Switch game, and they just wanted to make money in the meantime. Um, so they're going to make money off the 66 million install base of 3ds you know is it going to sell as well as sun and moon probably not but you know it'll probably still com combine sell north of 10 million units and that's plenty for them um which i mean it's even crazy thinking about that like i, I came from the zelda world there hasn't been a single zelda game that sold 10 million units so just thinking of oh that's a down that's a down pokemon game for sales wise right um so Overall, like I'm not disappointed by the direct because it is what it is. I I, th I just think people were hoping for a surprise, yeah. And I don't know. I, I think the problem with this direct coming as close as it is to E3 is it almost makes me worry. It, it shouldn't make me worry because this is the Pokemon company versus Nintendo on the whole. 
But it makes me worry a little bit about is this kind of leading what our expectations should be for E3 as well, where Nintendo's got that half-hour spotlight and we're just going to hear about games we have already know about and they're not really going to announce. Like, maybe their big surprise was Mario and Rabbids. Now we know. So... So now what? So yeah. now what? Because they literally said they're just talking about 2017 games, and if they stick strictly to that, it's like, well, okay. Well, the thing with the Nintendo, just not to get off topic for too long, just to kind of mention it. Yeah. I feel like in Nintendo Directs, they tend to say that, but now and then they kind of stretch that truth a little bit, you know? Sure, they, they have, yeah. And so I'm kind of expecting that, rather, like maybe until the end of Q2 of 2018, even. Um, even if it's, just, if it's just like one game announcement that's coming in like February or something, you know, uh, just something to kind of start off the new year. So we have something else to look forward to other than, oh, this is all we're getting, you know, because the game job thing, I feel like they have to have learned that from Wii U. You know, that was a mistake on their part. Everybody's aware of that. But with that said, you know, the switch has had what, like one big game a month now so far, uh, since launch, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, hopefully that continues, but you know. Well, I feel like this Direct, this Pokemon Direct, without meaning to, put almost more pressure on Nintendo at E3. Not right. just you know people worried about, oh, they're not going to have any new announcements, but that their big Switch announcement was another Wii U port. Right. And yeah. let's say that Nintendo's other big announcement, let's say that, big, that, that 2018 surprise is a Smash Bros. port for early next year. Well, that's great. It, it, obviously, that needs to happen, but if that's your other big announcement... And their previous big announcement was Pocket Tournament. It's like, well, so this is a console that's just surviving off Wii U ports all the time with yeah. a sprinkle of, of new games. And then people are like, well, what, what games are you even making if you don't have... I mean, if you only have three brand new Nintendo games coming out this year and everything else is Wii U ports, what the heck are you guys doing? What are they making? Like, what, what's Retro Studios been doing for the past four years? Since right. Tropical Freeze. You know, like, how could we not have any announcement in four years? Is there a problem? Are there issues? There um, is Pikmin 4. We haven't heard about yet. Supposedly, Pikmin 4. Well, yeah. We, be uh, we believe exists. Right. Well, Miyamoto I know. said in an interview, I think. Yeah, or something Miyamoto like said it was basically done. But that, uh, that's one announcement I almost expect to happen. Just because right, I definitely. think it was already done for Wii U. And they're like, yeah, we can't put this on Wii U. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um... But yeah, no, this Pokemon Direct, as I said, it, it met my expectations, which I guess is why I'm a little disappointed because I don't like when things meet my expectations unless <laughs> my expectations are so high um, that they can't be met typically. And I've, I've never really been that way with anything um, outside of Breath of the Wild. Had even the Breath of the Wilds release, my expectations were sky high and they were mostly met. Whereas uh, with this direct, I just kind of expected the safe route, and that's what they did. And it, I'm I kind I'm kind of left empty inside. Like uh, it's okay for po I almost want to like tell the Pokemon company that it's okay to not have a year with a new Pokemon game. Right. Like that's right. that's fine. You release them so often, it's okay. Like yeah, the Pokemon tournament thing, the port, you know, probably needed to happen. Just like all the other Wii U games. Like I'm sure we might hear at E3 that Bayonetta 2 is getting ported or something. Like that's fine. The Wii U library absolutely should get ported because the Wii U wasn't very popular, and those games sh deserve a second shelf life. But those shouldn't be like showcase games, you know. Like we're we're at a time now where everyone's waiting for the, all this big news. Pocket tournament's not really a big deal. In the, in the grand scheme of this. So, like, that feels like something that could have been announced after E3, closer to release. Right. And I also, just another thing to keep in mind is the fact that he specifically, the, the uh, I forget his name, the, the Pokemon Company president, specifically mentioned that this is the next big Switch game for Pokemon, and everyone else was remembering that interview, and I don't remember the exact quote, but... I distinctly remember there being an interview at one point where someone asked him and they were like, yeah, the next big Pokemon game is going to be on Switch. And then they came out with the Pokemon Black and White 2.374. <laughs> yeah, it, I think that's just the general feeling coming out of this Direct is that it's what people expected, but people were hoping that there was going to be more. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, we expected like a Pokemon Stars. And I get it. Those rumors have been around forever. Whether or not they're true or not doesn't really matter at this point. Um, 
we'll matters. find out soon enough anyway. Yeah, I mean, well, we're not going to find out until 2018. Right. To, to be honest. Time and if we find now. out the next Pokemon games are coming also to 3DS, then it's like, okay, well, you just give up. They're they're gonna they're, they're not releasing HD Pokemon. It's just not happening. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. I mean, I, I I feel like these games are are fine to exist as they are. Like you know, no one's gonna complain about Virtual Console. No one's gonna complain that po- Pocket Tournament got you know ported with some new content and you know there's new versions of Sun and Moon after how popular they were last year. Like that's fine. I just. I feel like these are just announcements they could sprinkle later in the year. They didn't need to be like a precursor to E3. Because um, as I said, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, which, I don't know if that's my fault. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm not... I'm just, there's probably people that are really hyped for the new Sun and Moon games. Like, really, Oh, I'm really sure. Hyped. Pokemon sells like hotcakes. Yeah, like there, I'm sure there's tons of people. We're obviously not among them, but it's... But it, it's to that point where, yeah, that's just what's expected. Can you do something unexpected? Like, you want to know what the next big Pokemon game could have been if they really wanted to make a big deal on Switch? They could have brought Pokemon Stadium back and had that would had the new awesome. Sun and Moon games work with that because we already have evidence of other games being able to work with cross-saves even from 3DS to Switch. So. What if when we learn more about Pokemon Tournament... That it turns out that Pokemon Tournament is the next Pokemon Coliseum, <laughs> or like it has like a side mode in it. Yeah, a, a new unannounced mode that that's Coliseum mode, basically. <laughs> that, that that's I'd almost like it. dreaming that they have another mode that's Pokemon Snap. That would be the only reason why I would buy Pokemon because I bought Pokemon on Wii U and played it like maybe two or three times in all of existence, and it's been collecting dust ever since. But I would probably actually legitimately play Pokemon Deluxe on Switch if it had a Coliseum mode. Well, yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of the issues with Pokemon Tournament or Pokemon Tournament or however it's pronounced is that it's definitely like an arcade game. Um, yeah. It, it, like ARMS feels like it's got more to it than a Pokemon Tournament because there's upgrades and unlockables and there's like a backstory apparently and... And Pokken legitimately is also an arcade. Yeah, in yeah, Japan. it was originally released as an arcade game, so it's like arcade games aren't a bad deal. Like that's fine, but there's not a lot of substance to it. So we know what this game is. We know. Like, you, here's your Pokemon. You have all your moves. You know. Like this is just what it is. It's a fighting game, and there's no substance behind it. Behind just Pokemon fighting, and. Arms has more substance to it, you know. Even a lot of the fighting games today, you know, the, the new Street Fighters, the new Mortal Kombat's, they even have more substance now added. So it almost feels out of place in our world today, where arcades aren't really as relevant as they used to be. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't all five of the new characters coming to Pokémon Deluxe just characters that they added to the arcade version? That I do not know. That I would have to double check because the arcade version is only in Japan. Um, Let me look it so up. I'm not 100% sure about that. This is the first time I've heard of them, but I haven't been watching any pocket tournament news in a, in a long time until this announcement. So, yeah, Mason, like, what's your general takeaway from this? You know, I feel like um, just in general, people expected more than what we got. And while we did get some you know, decent announcements for what they were, uh, people were expecting this thing and this thing only, for example, you know. And once they got what would seem like a repeat of what we just played last year, it's kind of like, what's the point, you know? Um, I'm sure people enjoyed the virtual console that we're getting uh, for 3DS and uh, Pokemon Tournament DX, or Deluxe, whatever you call it, uh, whatever you prefer. But I just can't see people getting insanely like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the best thing I've ever seen kind of thing, you know? Um, since we kind of have seen similar, uh, I mean, it's Pokemon. For me, looking at it from this perspective, from mine, you know, it all looks the same to me. I mean, that's just how I see Pokemon. I, I don't hate it, and I, I understand there's people that do like it. But for me personally, I'm not hyped really at all. It's just like, okay, cool, you know. Well, that's why a lot of people want to see, like, a Pokemon Stars happen, because it would be a full Pokemon game right. on Switch in HD, you want, you know, all the excuses for not doing certain things in the past because, you know, you're limited are gone. 
Right. So, like, that's what people... That, I think that's why a lot of people are let down today, because they wanted to see what Game Freak could do if you remove all these mobile restrictions and let them have the power of the Switch to, to basically do whatever the heck they want. I feel like if they did put it on the Switch, though, their entire Pokemon, like, the 3DS fan base in general would just die, you know? Because then, oh, there's an HD Pokemon. Forget this thing. I don't need it anymore. I can play it on my Switch, you know? Yeah, but the Switch would also continue to sell the like hotcakes. Oh, right, definitely. <laughs> so there's the counter to that. Like, yeah, the 3DS might die, but the 3DS sales have already been kind of sinking. Um, I know that they did get kind of a boost last year with Sun and Moon, but uh, right. in, in general, you know, th- they have been going down, as they should. It's a six-year-old piece of hardware. Right. Uh, you know, and yeah, I know they're releasing another 2DS XL thing, and that's fine. Uh, maybe that'll become their new standard cheap go-to, you know, system. I think it's 150 bucks. Exactly half the price of a Switch. Yeah, like, like and I, and I get it. Like, there is room in the marketplace for, like, a cheap handheld like that, especially for kids. But... Um, I feel like, I, I wonder if the reason some people are disappointed is just because they, they are in that camp that they just feel like the switch is absolutely perfect, but they see a path for it to be so much better. And part of that path includes Pokemon. I think for the switch to be at its peak, it would most definitely need to include Pokemon because Pokemon is Nintendo's one of their staples. arguably Nintendo's biggest seller compared to Mario and even Fire Emblem has been getting up there even compared to Zelda these days mm-hmm. but uh if Switch wants to succeed Switch definitely needs the uh the po- the Pokemon support which is where Pokémon kind of comes in but it doesn't quite fill the niche we've all been uh looking to itch per se yeah no, I think Nintendo is in a very interesting spot right now, uh, even with regards to Pokemon, with the 3DS, with everything, because I think a lot of people love the idea of the Switch being their all-in-one system, being that hybrid. It's not a home console you take on the go. It's a hybrid of home console and portable. Uh, and in many p- consumers' minds, that means, well, we should get all of Nintendo's franchises on that system. But Nintendo right. has never said they're going to do that. They, they've never once come out and said that's going to happen. That's just what people assume should happen because, hey, it is a hybrid. At least it feels like a hybrid. Uh, and Nintendo's been like, the whole time they've always said, we're going to continue to support the 3DS. There's going to continue to be 3DS exclusive games. And it's it, it, it just, this Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun are just further proof that, well, maybe they're are going to just continue to keep making 3ds games highly popular ones that are never going to come to switch and and you know you have to wonder someday if that you know let's say you know they said they're supporting the 3ds at least through 2018 well let's find out they announced even brand new pokemon games for 2018 and they're for the 3ds then you start getting to the point where nintendo might try to keep the 3ds going for another four years and is that ever going to start affecting the switch sales because people still need to own two nintendo systems to get all the nintendo games I feel, yes, absolutely, it will affect sales. I think the the 3DS is almost holding the Switch back, and it's unfortunate that... I'm not sure if Nintendo does or doesn't realize it, but it's slightly disappointing to me that Nintendo isn't just going all in with Switch and saying, all right, we've, we're here to fix our past mistakes. We know you didn't like the Wii U. The 3DS, it did all right, and we're going to do what we did good, and we're going to do what we did good here and there and everywhere. We're going to just make this a bam. <laughs> well, at least on the flip side, we do have Fire Emblem coming to the system next year. So, Yes. Hopefully a full Fire, Fire Emblem, Emblem game. will they, be they, great. They made it sound like it's a full Fire Emblem game. We haven't had Fire Emblem on a home console in a long time. So it's due since uh, Path of Radiance on Wii. It, 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 I mean, it, a long it's while. due. I mean, the 3DS re- helped revive the franchise, so now it's time to to get that home console experience. Well, I think that's gonna gonna wrap it up here for our reaction. I think I think fans out there kind of get the general gist of of how we feel. Um, it was okay, expected, a little bit of a letdown because we we're hoping for more. I will say the uh, virtual console thing is probably the. It's probably the highlight for me, though. It, isn't that sad? More virtual console they support. They brand new Pokemon games, and it's old Pokemon games you're excited about. I suppose, but I'm also one of those 
classic Pokemon Master Race kind of dudes. Once once they started making ice cream for Pokemon, I gave up. <laughs> I figured you you already mentioned that once. And they had, they had some weird Pokemon designs. That was what was kind of nice with Sun and Moon. They kind of took their good Pokemon designs and just you know redid them a little bit. Um, I will give them some credit for that because I don't know where they were going with some of those Pokemon. I designs. agree. <laughs> I never really planned to pick up Sun and Moon, but I did actually watch most of the Pokemon like unveiling trailers, and I saw all those Pokemon, and this last generation wasn't too bad. Well, I mean, again, you know, a lot of reimagining of already existing Pokemon, which uh, to me is way better than whatever the heck they've been doing for a couple of gens at least. Oh my god, the ice cream Pokemon. There's so there's so many bad Pokemon designs. Huh. It's like, are you really running out of ideas? Let me just look at... Oh, look, I have a remote control. Let's make this a Pokemon quick. Or a pair of keys. Or a pair of keys, yeah. Ne- next, or next, a pair of keys. You know what's going to happen? Oh, because there's new Pokemon in this one, so just wait for the Joy-Con Pokemon. Oh, yes. New favorite. It's happening. It's happening. It better evolve into a full Switch. <laughs> no, it, it evolves into two Joy-Cons. No grip. And then it becomes the actual switch. The uh, the, the switch. No, yeah, it'll, it'll do something mode. like it just shouldn't like it, it's third. It'll have some weird third evolution that's got nothing to do with it. And then a mega evolution where it has a dock. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, Mason, you got any closing thoughts on the direct? Uh, you know, like, kind of like what you said, just kind of summed it up pretty well. We were somewhat disappointed, but somewhat, you know, this was expected kind of thing. Um, you know, me personally, again, I'm not really too fond of the series in general so i'm kind of like okay cool but at the same time you know i wish the people got what they were expecting rather um i don't think sun and moon 2 i mean obviously it's pokemon it's gonna sell well i just don't think it's gonna like um be exactly what nintendo is expecting in terms of like sales and stuff sure sure well i want to thank you guys for, for joining me on this nintendo prime reacts uh, obviously, if you guys out there, you know, listening, watching, if you have your own opinions or you think you know these are the greatest things since sliced bread, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. It's cool to disagree with us. It, it's perfectly fine. We all have our own opinions on things. Uh, obviously, if you you know liked what we did here, you could like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, obviously, go ahead and over to Mason of Delfino's channel. He's got a lot of cool videos he does over there. Um, I watched most of them. Yeah, I've watched most of them the last few months. Um, and then obviously you got Sir Surge Outlet. I almost said chat yep. since that's his <laughs> name on Discord. On Discord. But uh, yeah, Sir Surge Outlet over on Twitch. You can go ahead and go watch him. I'll put some links down to you guys' channels and stuff in the description. Uh, thanks. Cool beans. Thanks for joining. Let's uh, maybe we'll get together again once this whole E3 fiasco is over. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, I and I, I'm jealous of you, Mason. Going to oh, E3. I'm so oh. excited. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> I, I went Thank last year, know. man. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll catch you guys next time. All right.